Welcome to the Yahaha Essentials tutorial series. My name is Chris, or you may know me better online as Chulu Longcorn. I'm here with Yahaha doing these tutorials to show you how to set up the basics in your space. Today, we'll be going over the teleport point component. This component can be used to send the player anywhere within a space instantly. You can use it to send them to otherwise inaccessible places as they work through a space, to allow them to navigate quickly between already solved areas of a space, or as a high-tech or high-fantasy transportation system. Whenever you want to get the player around quickly, the teleport point component is your friend. To demonstrate teleportation, I've decided to go the high-tech route. So I selected the Sci-Fi Cityscape template. I couldn't ask for a better place to show this component off. There are several ways we can add a teleporter to our spaces. We can, of course, use the pre-built teleporter with all the bells and whistles, or we can craft our own to fit our space and its themes. Let's start by taking a look at the pre-built asset available for us, the gear teleport point. The gear teleport point contains everything we need to get teleporters up and running in a space fast. It contains a teleportation point component, an audio component, and an attached VFX component. While not all of these elements are necessary, they make for a complete effect and teleport experience for a player. We'll examine all of these parts to an extent later, but for now, let's focus on the main component we need to get teleportation running, the teleportation point component. We'll begin by setting up two teleport points in an area here near the spawn point, far enough from each other to make the distance traveled worth the teleport because teleporting short distances is kind of pointless. Let's rename both of these teleporters so we can tell them apart. We'll name one Teleport Normal 01 and the other Teleport Normal 02. Creative, I know. This is important, as you can see, because we need to give the teleportation point component a target to teleport the player to. Setting each of these to the other teleporter will allow us to send the player back and forth between the two teleporters. Beam me up, Scotty. Okay, that's working, but I think the teleport wait times are a bit long, and the way the player's facing when they arrive in each teleporter is a bit odd. Let's fix these issues. First, we want to change the way the player ends up facing when they arrive at each destination. We do this by setting the character rotate. The character rotate values will determine what direction the player will be facing when they arrive relative to the destination. That means we want to set Teleporter 1's Y value to negative 135 and Teleporter 2's Y value to 90. Each of these will ensure the player will arrive facing down the walkways each of the teleporters are on. Then let's shorten the teleport delay to 2 seconds for each teleporter. As you can see, this is better. Not only do we wait less for each teleport, but we're also not just stuffing the player's face into the buildings or pointing them in odd, random directions. The teleportation point component also gives us the capability to teleport to places in our scene other than teleport points. We can choose to teleport to the location of any object within a scene, which sends us to the pivot point of the object, or we can choose to teleport to any spot in our scene by using a set of coordinates. Let's set up another teleporter on the walkway right over here and rename it Teleporter Normal 03. In order to teleport to another object, let's place a beveled ring here near the front of this long covered area and name it Teleport Destination 01. Now, if we set the teleportation point for the new teleporter to the beveled ring object like so, we can teleport to where the object is in the scene even though it doesn't contain a teleportation point. All right, now that we've got that working, let's take it to the next step and send the player to a point in the scene of our choosing. First, we need to change the teleporter's destination type to custom coordinate. That gives us a set of coordinates to enter, which by default are the space center. We want to choose the position where the player will teleport to. So let me show you a trick I use to find the exact position I want in any scene. I use an object from the resource box. Any object will work, so I'll use one I've already downloaded. 
I then place it in the scene and move it to where I want the player to materialize, making sure it's a little above the ground. Otherwise, we can get the player materializing below the surface, which can lead to very odd behavior. Now, I copy the position of the object over into the coordinates of the teleporter. Finally, I delete the object. And boom! We can now teleport to a location we choose in the scene, and we didn't have to guess where that was. Before we move on, let's play with the sound component a bit so you can see how that might work in combo with teleportation. If you would like to know more about adding and adjusting sound in a scene, I suggest the Audio Essentials tutorial. Let's jump down to the audio component attached to this teleport point and switch the audio file to something swooshy, like the Arcane Spell 23 file. I chose this after a bit of playing around because the sound timing works out for our teleport timing if we set the teleport delay to 2 seconds. With that in place, let's leave everything else the same and see how it works. Cool! Now we have teleportation sounds. You can use anything you would like here, but make sure the timing of the sound is not too long. Otherwise, due to the positional nature of attached sounds, it will cut off when you teleport. To close things out, let's build our own teleporters from scratch and use them to send the player around the scene. Don't worry, I'll share the very technical and scientific skills needed to do this. <laughs> to begin, let's construct a teleportation point of our own. I've chosen this pod from the asset library so that we can create a sort of teleportation booth for the player to use in the scene. We'll resize it to look more like a single person pod. Now it's a teleportation bullet. <laughs> Next, we'll want to add the teleportation point component to it so that it can be a teleporter. For the teleportation point component to work, we need to add a trigger so that the player can activate it. Let's configure that to have a capsule collision because that's more pod-like, and set the teleportation time to one second. Then we'll add a visual effect so that we can generate some cool visuals. I've chosen the orange light effect VFX, but you can choose anything you would like. That will need to be made a child of the pod in the Explorer, be placed just right, have its trigger box sized properly, and its triggering condition set to on enter. Finally, let's add the audio component so we can get a sound effect when we use the teleporter. I'll use the Arcane Spell 25 for that since it's a bit shorter and fits our desired teleportation timing better. And it too will need its triggering condition set to on enter. Now let's rename it so it's easier to keep track of. Configuring all these things allows us to have a pre-built asset which we can duplicate around the scene which will look and act the same everywhere we place it. We can also use this nifty feature called My Creations to make it an asset we can not only add around this scene, but which we can use in any of our other scenes. Just right click on the object and choose Add to My Creations. Now we need to place the pod around our scene in a couple of other spots so that we have places to go. I'll set one up here in the Skywalk, which is an area we wouldn't be able to get to any other way. And I'll set the other one up back here in this courtyard, so we have a somewhat distant point to go to. Make sure you rename these to make selecting them as teleport targets easier. I just renamed them by numbering them. With that done, we need to select each teleport pod in turn and make one of the other teleport pods its destination. We should configure the character rotate for each one so that the player faces out the door on arriving in each pod. And now we have a way to allow players to teleport around the scene by using the teleport pods. Very cool. Don't you wish you could do this in real life? I do. It would save me so much time. As you can see, the teleport point can be used to get the player around your scene quickly. It allows you to move the player between a set of teleporters to certain objects in a space or to anywhere in a space you wish to send them. It can be used to allow players to skip already finished parts of a scene as they play, get them into places with special access only, or allow them to quickly move about your scene. That is, unless they don't want to use teleporters. 
Forget it. Forget it. No more beaming. This time I'm going to walk. That's all for this tutorial, but we have several more elements to cover. So don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified when we post more Yahaha Essentials tutorials. Also, be sure to visit us on Discord and in the forums to discuss space creation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon.